For whatever reason, my videos on pickup trucks generate by far the most comments of any of the videos I make, mostly extremely high quality comments. So clearly, there's something I've managed to tap into here that I haven't taken the time to fully understand, and today we're finally going to grapple with it. An exploration and psychoanalysis of pickup truck guy coming up next. This is City Nerd, weekly content on cities and transportation. Viewer suggested topics always welcome, but really today, eh, I'm just looking for trouble. So just to recap, since I haven't touched this topic in like a year and a half, and I do have a lot of new viewers since then, I made a video about pickup trucks where I pointed out that they're expensive, dangerous, inefficient, rarely used for their intended purpose, and really just kind of look stupid. It became my most commented on and disliked video ever to that point. Well, fast forward a few months, I made the possibly inadvisable decision to make a response video to all the hate I got in the comments on the first video. Well, recently I went through my analytics and discovered that that response video now has even more comments than the original. And even though I've made a lot of videos since then that have had a lot more views, none of them has gotten nearly the amount of engagement in the comments section. So today's video is very meta. It's a response video to comments I got on a response video to comments I got on yet another video. And I'm sure this won't be the last. I'm afraid to tell you that this is likely to be an accelerating infinite regress until we finally reach the singularity. A quick note about how I handle comments. My current approach is about 24 hours after I release a video, I read and respond to the 10 comments that appear at the top of the comment feed, which is usually the highest quality comments based on engagement, and they're almost always thoughtful or constructive or at least funny. The really stupid and lazy comments sink to the bottom of the feed like so much jetsam, but for this one, I read all 4,183 comments, which is a form of self-torture I can probably only submit my Myself to every couple of years or so without requiring expensive therapy. Although some of you guys' comments on this last one were genuinely entertaining. The F-350's pedals are spaced far apart to accommodate the owner's enormous clown shoes. I too enjoy extremely large vehicles with wide wheelbases, especially the articulated ones that carry up to 60 passengers. People love to take stuff in my videos very literally, and I did joke in the last one that I do support a pickup driver's right to own and operate a very stupid vehicle, just as I support their right to pile all their cash in the middle of the street and light it on fire. But I was quickly informed that the right to light your cash on fire doesn't actually exist. And furthermore, have I considered that the places where pickup truck drivers live often don't have sidewalks or paved roads where said incineration could possibly occur. And I think if you look at the data, you'll find that most pickup truck drivers only pretend not to live in urbanized areas. Another person wants to coin the term emotional support vehicle, which I do support and really does get to the theme of this whole video. And my personal top rated comment on this video. I remember working at Home Depot and loading an appliance into the back of some lady's truck and she was terrified we'd scratch the truck bed. Lady, it is a truck. Okay, in order for this video to make sense, I have to give a short previously on City Nerd recap because I have a lot of new viewers who won't have seen either of the previous two videos yet. Or for a lot of you, it's been a year or two. So a major theme of the more recent video was the weird uniformity of the comments I got from a certain type of pickup truck enthusiast. Like the lack of creativity is kind of stunning and almost suspicious. And I'm sure I claimed not to know what the origin of the whole soy insult was, which apparently signaled to my viewers that it was their their job to educate me. Honestly, YouTube should have a pop-up that warns you when you're making a comment that a hundred other people have already made. I mean, I guess people are just trying to be helpful, but just a personal observation. I think there are certain types of knowledge that actually make you stupider. Like, knowing the genesis of the soy boy insult requires brain cells that could have been put to better use, meaning it literally displaces much more useful knowledge like, I don't know, knowing who the first person to lead the NBA in both steals and assists was. Mostly, people wanted to refer me to an H Bomber Guy video essay on the topic. By the way, did you know that H Bomber Guy can be found on Nebula, the creator owned streaming platform? And did you further know that you can get amazing deals on subscriptions using my custom links down in the description? And you can get all my videos ad free, promo free, and like a week early? 
I'm sure you had no idea. Finally, I had people pointing out the irony that soybeans are a cash crop for the kind of rural Americans that pickup truck drivers pretend to be, even going so far as to suggest that maybe that means soy boy is actually a compliment. I'm skeptical. And then the other category of comment I got the most bizarre variations on was the wife's boyfriend genre. The best of which was this one, which I won't even attempt to read because I absolutely can't get through it without breaking. I guess you are all entertained by my misery and that's cool. Go ahead, have fun at my expense. Wife's boyfriends who hit the notification bell are cool. But the thing is, I feel like this particular brand of insult really goes to the heart of pickup truck guy's psychological profile. I mean, what kind of person is really that obsessed with the idea of their spouse getting out of bounds? In the last video, I joked about it being projection, and it's funny, but maybe it isn't actually a joke. I mean, you do have to wonder if there's some sort of systemic disorder these people are suffering from that makes them think it's a good idea to drop like 80,000 bucks on an unwieldy vehicle that just looks ridiculous. The emotional support vehicle jab sort of gets at it, but I do wonder if it goes deeper into things like repressed urges to the point where a pickup truck is really a defense mechanism, not just literally in terms of how it might fare in a crash, but figuratively as well. Look, I don't have expertise in psychotherapy beyond having read like a bunch of Freud and Jung in college. So before I try to get too metaphorical, let's look at some of the use cases that were suggested in the comments in this last video. Like this guy uses his F-150 at his goat farm and looks askance at the pavement queens that run rampant in a lot of urbanized Texas. Come to think of it, this was the only actual legitimate use case that I even saw in the entire comment thread. Instead, I got lots of documentation of extremely poor use cases for pickups. Like people who commute from a quarter of a mile away and complain about gas prices. Eh, thanks for the 10 bucks, by the way. Apparently Brazilians don't use pickup trucks in rural areas at all, so this is all very confusing for them. Same in Argentina, probably the red meat capital of planet Earth, and pickups are just not a thing. Like, is there really no valid purpose for these vehicles besides goat farms? But people were all in on cargo vans. I mean, buying a cargo van and putting Punisher skull stickers and truck nuts on it is probably a non-starter, but at least people won't notice it's empty when you're driving it around. This motorcyclist questions the intellectual capabilities of pickup truck drivers and thinks it's less than optimal that these kinds of people are driving a vehicle with a powerful engine and usually no payload in the truck bed, which is extremely typical and ridiculous if you ever really look at the pickups that drive around your city. Well, except this guy didn't really like that argument. The criticism that trucks aren't always being maximized for their utility seems one directional. Do you have all four or five seats loaded in your car wherever you go? Those empty seats are the truck's empty bed. Something to think about. Well, that's checkmate. These people are just master logicians. Eh, I'll come back to these naysayers later. I made the point in an earlier video that if you really needed a pickup truck on the rare occasion, instead of owning one that you drive around empty 99% of the time looking like a complete idiot, you could just rent one for like an hour or two from U-Haul or Home Depot for like 30 bucks. No one really disagreed. This guy even did a break-even analysis that showed he'd have to rent a pickup thousands of times before buying one made any sense. I mean, the math here just isn't that difficult. The huge irony here is these are people who fashion themselves as free-thinking, no-nonsense, rugged individualists, but their consumption choices seem to be entirely driven by slick multi-million dollar ad campaigns that link your choice of vehicle to your masculinity. I'll come back to advertising in a bit, but there were a lot of comments about about the irony that people sitting high up in what basically amounts to an armored rolling fortress, thinking they're alphas, and people who are actually physically fit and risk life and limb on their bike in traffic are betas. Lots of people in the comments recounted kind of harrowing stories of reckless behavior by the people who drive these vehicles. I believe it, but I would just say anecdotally, it's not my experience. The one time in 20 plus years of biking where I actually got injured, I cracked a rib when I crashed, swerving out of the way of a car that had run a stop sign, but it was like a Subaru with a bike rack on the back, Portland. 
but it does seem true that there's a certain type of person that just doesn't see people on bikes as humans worthy of consideration. It's like, if you're on a bike, that either means you're a poor person who can't afford a car, so expendable, or an elitist who can quote unquote afford to, but chooses not to drive, also completely expendable. It's like there's no middle ground and there's definitely no empathy. And yeah, maybe this all just boils down to some basic differences between people who inhabit different ends of the political spectrum, but I think all this goes a little deeper and probably can't be reduced to a left-right thing. People pointed out that part of what's at work here is a persecution complex, or a sense of oppression, and that's what makes them defensive or often hyper-aggressive. And I think it's fair to say people who actually live in rural settings are oppressed, but the thing is, what it is they're oppressed by is the inexorable advance of technology and industrialization, and the fact that we don't live in an agrarian society anymore. It's not the government or city dwellers whose votes count for less than people who live in rural areas, but I think it's fair to say there's a bit of a crisis in how people who live outside metro areas view their role in society and how secure they feel. And I also think it's fair to say there's a bit of a crisis in the way men understand their role in today's world. I mean, very tiny violin, right? And this is beyond the scope of what I want to talk about today, but the gender gap in partisan identification in the Gen Z cohort is getting wider than ever. There are lots of theories for why this is, but to me, a lot of it is recursive. Like, the more you wallow in self-pity at your inability to form a useful relationship with a suitable mate, the less attractive you become to potential suitable mates. It's just math. There are just a lot more conservative straight dudes out there embracing cartoon versions of masculinity than there are straight women who want to be with a guy like that. And eh, I guess math is oppressive. Although people in the comments had all kinds of opinions on whether owning a stupid looking truck is a big hit with the ladies. Like, one vote for yes, suburban women are looking for an expensive truck when they're dating, which maybe? A lot of this is self-selection and filtering. A pickup truck guy wants to attract the sort of person who's gonna be impressed by a pickup truck, and that's fine, but I just don't know that the candidate pool is as big as they've been led to believe. And other people said it's a huge red flag, but at least in some parts of Texas, it's a major green flag. I don't pretend to understand it, but I do like this suggestion from one of my viewers, which is that for a small fraction of what a truck costs, you can do it the Japanese way and spend your money on cool looking outfits instead of shuffling around in a black hoodie with a Punisher skull on it. Okay, in a minute I'm going to dig into the responses from actual pickup truck owners, as well as some of the more disturbing stuff I saw. But first, you know what to do. I am doing more live streams this year just because I like talking to you guys and doing extemporaneous stuff, and hitting the bell will keep you in the loop. All the usual ways to engage and direct support via Patreon is a great way of funding all the therapy appointments I'm going to need after having waded through all these comments. Although, to be perfectly honest, because I never read more than like 10 or 20 of them, my expectations for this were low, and I anticipated a bunch of low-effort spam. But the truth of it is, my viewers actually leave much, much higher quality comments than I was expecting. And honestly, a lot of it is just people complimenting me, which feels awkward, but it's still cool if there's cash attached to it. I'm honestly more interested in the criticism though. Guy who watches my stuff at half speed, my hat is off to you. I always assume that most people watch my stuff at at least 1.5 because I'm such a slow talker. Actually, I prefer the term deliberate. 0.5 though, that's verging on self-harm. I'm concerned for you guy who thinks I judge too harshly. There are a lot of YouTube channels out there that don't have opinions on anything. You're free to watch those. In the last video I told you that somewhat uninformed condescension is really kind of this channel's brand. Well, this viewer is telling me that that isn't something I should be proud of, so you're really gonna deny me my full self-actualization? And this one. I dislike cities and the urbanite lifestyle and sense of values in general, so aside from this video, I may find city nerd annoying to hang with. Well, first of all, pretty presumptuous to think I want to hang with someone with a mildly disturbing YouTube profile pic. And second, I promise you I'm super fun to hang with. 
I'm always kind of wondering if I'm preaching to the choir with most of the stuff I do, and I've got more to say about that, but this viewer thanks the Truck Bros for driving up the engagement on urbanist content, which would be cool if it were true, but I'm not sure that's the way this works. What's definitely true though is that when I talk about pickup trucks, no matter what I'm actually saying about them, this app starts serving up lots of ads for pickup trucks, especially the Chevy Silverado, apparently. Which is funny and ironic because this channel's audience has to be about the opposite of their target demographic, but in a roundabout way, because these videos end up attracting so much hate watching from truck bros, eh, Chevy is probably getting it about right. But I do wonder, is the way AdSense serves up mid-roll placements in my videos that simple, that it just looks for keywords in the transcription of my video? Like if I start randomly saying the words Rolex or Lamborghini, is that going to drive my AdSense auction prices way up? Guess we're going to find out. But here's the really shocking thing I found once I'd gone through over 4,000 comments. I was really looking forward to seeing a bunch of absurdly stupid replies from truck bros, but instead what there were a lot more of were pickup truck owners or former pickup truck owners who actually agreed with me. Guy who finally stopped buying trucks and now his car and his bike get him everywhere he needs to go. Guy who kind of misses his truck but lives in a city and just walks most places. Guy who can't wait to get rid of his Silverado. Guy who drives pickup trucks at work but doesn't need an expensive gas guzzling F whatever to prove his manliness. I tip my cap. Guy who strongly prefers a Subaru with a trailer over a pickup for his regular <laughs> goose hunting expeditions. Guy who can't wait to get rid of his truck and buy an e-bike. Guy who dreams of getting rid of his truck and prays fervently for my mediocre YouTube content to hasten the urbanist revolution. Guy who has a stated intention of getting rid of his truck and credits Urbanism YouTube and Safe Streets Twitter for not only helping him see things differently, but his friends too. It's almost too good to be true. New subscriber. Ten years ago, I would have been one of the guys calling you a beta soy boy. Guy who used to own a huge truck and all that happened was everybody wanted to use it to haul their own stuff. The downside of being the wife's boyfriend, I guess. Not everyone is completely redeemable though. I own a highly modified pickup truck that blows huge clouds of smoke and I also agree with every point you made in your video. Like, I feel like this one is possibly sociopathic and is going to require a more complicated sort of intervention. You know what though, it's really strange. That video where I responded to pickup truck guy comments is probably the most outright antagonistic thing I've ever done. But for whatever reason, it still seemed to resonate with the kind of people who can really grow and broaden the urbanist movement. It kind of makes me wonder whether we should be bending over backwards to be super diplomatic when we're trying to change minds. Sometimes I think we just need to be honest and blunt. Maybe people actually respect that more than when you just kind of coddle them and their bad choices and try not to offend. I don't want to sugarcoat this too much though because not everyone's on board. Guy who quote unquote upgraded to a Toyota Tacoma and is now living life to its fullest. Like did a Toyota Tacoma commercial write this comment? A guy who has different politics from me and loves his pickup, but enjoys the video and says I give him things to think about. Honestly, I kind of love that. Guy who doesn't dispute that the vast majority of Americans live in urban environments, but challenges me to consider where my food comes from. I mean, enormous agribusinesses? Are there people who go grocery shopping at Walmart and think all their food is being grown and raised at small, independent, family-run farms? A guy who thinks more CO2 is good because it's plant food. I haven't heard this argument in decades, but maybe I'm living inside a bubble. This guy. I have a lifted trek and I'm friendly and approachable, lol. I don't know, that lol makes me nervous and I'm just not going to accept self-reporting on this. Distrust but verify, I always say. And the most common kind of guy, the why do you care how people spend their money or what they drive guy. You know, as soon as modern pickup trucks stop being a health and safety hazard for everyone on the outside of the vehicle, I'll start caring less. 
I promise. For the most part though, I felt like I'd avoided the full wrath of pickup truck guy. And I was feeling a little disappointed that I didn't have more idiotic comments to dunk on, but also kind of good that maybe I'm not crazy and also optimistic, like people you think of as being your polar opposite are actually persuadable, but premature. Because of the moderation settings I use, YouTube marks a whole bunch of comments potentially inappropriate and holds them for review. And honestly, why would I ever review those? but I was fully committed to this bit, so I gritted my teeth and reviewed all of them. But plot twist, there were literally only a couple hate posts, and all the rest of them were basically people agreeing with me, but just using more colorful language. I don't know, maybe pickup truck guys learned their lesson, but... I'd hate to jinx it. The thing I kept thinking about is the fact that the type of people who drive these kinds of vehicles tend to be people who don't necessarily care what happens to anyone outside their ruling fortress and either don't believe in the concept of human-caused climate change or don't care because they don't think it's going to affect them personally. And if this was limited to a subset of wackos in the US, that would be one thing. But several people pointed out that truck brain is infecting other countries too. In Asia, for example. Proliferating in countries where the streets are much narrower, like Chile. European countries where people are complaining about parking stalls being too small. An onslaught of yank tanks rolling on Sydney and Melbourne. As an American, I kind of want to apologize to the rest of the world, even the country that gave us Rupert Murdoch. Because like it or not, the US is massively influential in all this stuff globally, which means that it's just that much more important that those of us stateside work to move our land use and transportation in the right direction in our own backyards. And that's all I've got. Thanks for joining and thanks as always to the patrons for allowing me to transform the reading of thousands of YouTube comments into a full-time vocation. Keep the great topic suggestions coming and the thoughtful comments. I'll be back with a new episode next week and I'll see you then.